it really, I think, starts by looking at, you know, how was infrastructure traditionally managed? If we look at traditional infrastructure, you know, say VMware running inside of a private data center, the classic approach was, you know, if I'm a consumer of infrastructure, I would file a ticket, and then someone at the other end of this ticketing queue is pulling it off, logging into sort of a management portal or an administrative console, and pointing and clicking to provision that piece of infrastructure. Now, this was OK if I didn't have to manage a lot of infrastructure, right? Or if the churn of my infrastructure was relatively minimal. And this was true uh, for many sort of private data centers. A VM would live for months to years. There was a lem relatively limited scale uh, of, of deployment. And so it was possible to sort of manually point and click and administer these systems. Now as we're making a transition and saying there's a few key changes. One, we're going to a cloud environment, which is predominantly API driven. That's one big change. The second change is there's a much lower sort of, there's a much higher elasticity of infrastructure where instead of months to years, it's now days to weeks in terms of how long a resource might live. The scale of infrastructure is much, much higher because instead of a handful of large instances, we might have many smaller instances. So there's many more things we need to provision. And this infrastructure tends to be cyclic, right? We might scale up to handle our load during peak day and then scale down at night to save on cost because it's not a fixed cost. Unlike owning hardware that we can depreciate, we're now paying by the hour. So it makes sense to only use the infrastructure you need and you have to have this sort of elasticity. And so as you start making these changes, all of a sudden, the thought of I'm going to file a thousand tickets every morning to spin up to our peak capacity and then file another thousand tickets at night to spin back down and then manually manage all of this clearly starts to become sort of challenging in terms of how do we begin to operationalize this in a way that's reliable and robust and not prone to human error, right? So there's sort of a change in terms of the dynamicism of our infrastructure. And so the real idea behind infrastructure as code is how do we take the process, right? In some sense, the things that we were pointing and clicking to achieve, how do we take that and capture that in a codified way? And so now if I need to do it one time, 10 times, or 1,000 times, I can automate that. So now every morning I can hit a script that brings up 1,000 machines, and every evening hit the same script to bring it back down to whatever our evening size is. And I can begin to both automate that, but also now that I've captured it as a codified form, I can check it into version control, and I get versioning. So now I can see sort of an incremental history of who changed what, how is my infrastructure actually defined at any given point of time, and I have this sort of transparency of documentation that I lack in sort of a traditional point and click environment, where it's really sort of oral tradition in terms of what is the configuration, what are the things that you need to sort of point and click and set up. So that really becomes the value, is really the versioning of it, the reusability of the code, and the ability to then do automation on top of it.